fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. September 17th dawned just like any other day in the town of Martin's Gap. The barber whistled a tune and flies droned lazily about his shop as Kit Jones gave the sheriff his morning shave. Down the road, Pete Porter and his wife set up type for their weekly newspaper. And nearby, in a small, neat building, Martha Stevens hummed as she swept the floor of her restaurant. Everything was just as usual. There was nothing to indicate the disaster that was just about to strike the town. Martha thought the three men who reigned up in front of the restaurant were cowhands from a nearby ranch. But she knew differently as soon as they came through the door. I'll bet you can. So, you better can't put a bullet through that oil lamp. Huh? That's right. What's this? Wait. Wait, mister. You can't do that. I can, huh? <laughs> I just did it. No, you see here. You... I'll do it again. I'll have the law on you for that. I like the sound of things getting smashed. Come on, boys. Let's go to work. Oh, no. No, no, no. At the barber shop, Kit had finished with the sheriff and sat alone waiting for a customer. The men who came through the door were badly in need of shaves. Good morning, gents. Good morning. What'll it be? Boys, look in that big looking glass. Yeah. It's insulting the way it shows herself. That's right. I'm going to smash it. Oh, now, wait. Wait, gents. What's it bust them bottles? Now, wait. Now, wait, gents. Help When the men rode out of town, they left the barber shop and the restaurant in a shambles. That afternoon, Pete Porter had just completed a revised front page of his newspaper. Now, oh, Janie, I guess we're about ready to start the press rolling. Uh, Pete, hmm. someone just came in. I see him out there in front, dressed like a dude. Howdy, mister. Are you looking for me? I'm looking for the owner of this newspaper. Now, well, that's me. Porter's the name. You got a story about what happened in town this morning? If you're talking about the men that wrecked the restaurant and barbershop, I sure have. Uh-huh. 
Say, that's a nice-looking printing machine you got there. I brought it from the East. What about it? You, uh, you'd have a hard time replacing that if it was smashed, wouldn't you? Come to the point, stranger. Right. Now, I'm selling something that's a good thing for a businessman to have. So it protects you against trouble like some other folks have had. What are you selling, a new kind of shooting iron? No, nothing like that. Now, this is an investment. Here, here's a contract you signed. Look it over. Well, what is it, Pete? You better go home, Jane. Well, I do no such thing. Who is this man? What's that paper he has there? As I see it, stranger, this is an agreement that I pay you $50 in cash every week. And if my place is smashed up like the others, all the damage will be paid for. Hey, that's it. If I don't sign... I suppose my place is smashed. Is that it? Well, now, I wouldn't put it as flat as that. So you're working with those men, huh? You played the same game over in Shaker City. Well, here's my answer. Oh, hey. I'll get up and get out of here. You'll regret hitting me. Get out or I'll hit you again. Come on in, boys. All right. Pete! Pete, look out! Out the back, Jane. The back way. Hurry. Break the place, boys. Just play the face. Let him have it. Back it up, Pete. publisher lost consciousness with sounds of wreckage dinning in his ears. When he wakened, he found himself at home in bed. His wife was by his side. Jane. Oh. Jane. Oh, Pete. Pete. Oh, at last you're conscious. What? Well, I'm home. Yes, Pete. And you've been badly hurt. It's a wonder you're alive. Oh, I guess I've been unconscious for several hours. Several hours? Pete, it's been six days. Six days? Well, I remember a skinny man with a sneaking face. I, I hit him, and things happened. Yes, Pete. You were hit on the head and then shot in the chest. Those men were going to kill you, but help arrived. Help? You mean the sheriff? No. No, an Indian and a masked man came through the well, back door. A masked man? I was watching from beneath the desk. Oh, Pete, how they fought. They drove those terrible men away, and, and then they brought you home. Mask man. Oh, don't move, Pete. The Indian said you had to lie still. Indian? The one who was with the mask man. He took the bullet out and dressed your wound. The press, Jane. Did they smash the press? Everything smashed. Oh, the office is worse than Martha's restaurant and Kit's barber shop. Yeah, it's the same game that was played in Shaker City. Same thing, Jane. Every businessman in town will have to pay tribute to that gang. Unless the sheriff steps in mighty fast and does something. The sheriff is doing his best, but he can't get far. No one will help him. Why not? Because Martha and Kit and everyone else who could identify those men had warning letters that came yesterday. Warning letters, huh? Yes. One came for you, too. I opened it. It said you'll be killed if you help the law. Let me see the letter. All right. But now you lie quietly while I get it. And then I'll read it to you. I left it over here on the table. Well, where is it? Where is it, Jane? It isn't here. It's gone. What? There's a bullet here in its place. Pete, look, a bullet. A bullet? It's made of something like silver. Silver? Let me see it. Let me see it, Jane. Hurry. Here. Yeah, it is. A silver bullet. Jane, what's that Indian's name? The masked man's friend. Tonto. Tonto. That's the Indian's name, you sure? Well, that's what the masked man called him. Jane, the man who helped us has a letter. He took it. He needed it. He's a lone ranger. I'm glad to hear that. What, uh, what the... There he is. Take it easy, Porter. Your wound might reopen if you try to move too what? quickly. The lone ranger. You were just beyond that door. I wondered if the silver bullet would mean anything to you, Porter. I guess I owe my life to you and Tonto. You can forget that debt. You have a greater obligation... Oh, I have? Yes. You had courage enough to defy that gang. As a public-spirited citizen, it's your duty to keep fighting them. If you'll tell me how to fight that outfit, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. I'm not afraid to risk my life. Good for you, Porter. First of all, you've got to send your wife out of town. Me? Yes. So the gang can't strike at Pete through you. Oh. Jane, you can go and visit your sister over in Turkey Center. Oh, but Pete, I don't want to leave you to fight this thing alone. I'll not be fighting alone, Jane. Not with a lone ranger and Tonto on my side. To say nothing of the sheriff. 
Mrs. Porter, if you'll be ready to leave, Tala will call for you about an hour before daybreak to see that you reach Turkey Center safely. But I don't... She'll be ready. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon, Pete. I'll be looking for you. Escorted by Tonto, Jane Porter left Martin's Gap before dawn. It was afternoon when the Lone Ranger returned to the small house and found Pete Greston sitting in a chair. The main thing, Pete, is to get someone with courage to bring charges against those crooks. You can identify at least one of them. I'll do it. If we can get one or two of them in jail, I think we'll get them all. How? Just leave that to me. I've already talked to the sheriff, and he's agreed to enter into a plan. I identified myself to him just as I did to you. If I could just get the critter that's behind this gang, I'd take the damage they did to my place out of his hide. That's likely one of the neighbors. They've been dropping in quite frequent to see how I'm getting along. Pete, I want to meet some of your neighbors. Good. Come in. Hello there, Porter. Timmons, come in. I just dropped by to see... Ah, Timmons, you just forget the fact that this man's wearing a mask. You look on him as a friend. Uh, yes, uh, of course, a friend of yours, Pete. He's a friend of mine. Mr. Timmons is our banker here in Martin's Gap. How do you do, Timmons? I'm, uh, I'm glad to know you. This man's going to help us smash that pack of wolves that busted up my place. Good. I'm proud to know you. Sit down. Uh, oh, you must be the masked man who saved Pete's life, huh? I? Yes, indeed. I've heard about the way you and your Indian friend rushed through the rear door and attacked those those troublemakers. I declare you're a genuine fighting man. <laughs> I <laughs> guess the story got built up a little by the time you heard tut, it. Tut, tut, I know what you did. Why, you and your friend tackled four heavily on men. Yes, indeed. I'm proud to know you. Hmm. You are well informed. <laughs> well, as a banker, sir, it's my business to know things. I see. Uh, Pete, how are you getting along? First rate. I'd have been here sooner, but I've been busy, terribly busy. These poor shopkeepers. I tell you, I don't know what the world's coming to. I've had to arrange a loan for those whose places were wrecked. I'll do the same for you, too, Pete. Oh, I reckon I'll be able to manage somehow. Well, how's Jane? I haven't seen her since before the attack. Jane's all right. She's gone to Turkey Center to visit. Oh, has she? I'm going to fight this thing, Timmons. I'm going to fight it to the finish. Well, you always were a fighter, Pete. Always a fighter, the good one. A, um, shall I say, a crusader. Well, Mr. Timmon. Yes? Are you paying tribute? I'm a... Why do you ask? Are you? Well, that... That is... My bank has, hasn't been attacked. So you are. Shucks, I take it for granted you were, Timmons. You always did scare, is he? <laughs> now, sir, I didn't come here to be insulted. Oh, forget it. No harm, man. Well, frankly, I don't see as we have any choice. Everyone was given a fairly clear understanding of the situation. It would do no good to arrest the men who are known to be in the gang. No? Well, take that thin man as an example, the one who called on Pete. Uh, it would be practically impossible to prove anything against him without a witness to testify. Without a witness, it would and be. And who would be the witness? Oh. Who would care to risk the punishment that would surely follow from the unknown members of the gang? <laughs> and what of the jury? Would they risk their lives by voting guilty? Now, look here, Timmons. We know that skinny weasel face is one of them. Uh We know another is named Butch. He's the leader of the wrecking party. Why not arrest him and see what happens? I'll sign the complaint. Well, that's a matter for you to take up with the sheriff. I aim to do that same. Uh, That's up to you, Pete. But I wouldn't like to take that much risk. Well, now I must get along. Lots of work to do. (coughs) Good day, Porter. Bye, Timmons. Thanks for dropping in. And you, sir. Good day. Good day, Banker Timmons. Well, now that he's gone, what's our next move? You named it, Pete. You'll get the sheriff here and you can swear out a warrant for the arrest of Slim and Butch. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Pete Porter, the publisher, was not the only one to whom the Lone Ranger had identified himself. The masked man had conferred with Sheriff Jeb Calhoun and found the lawman willing and eager to do all in his power to cooperate in any way possible to smash the gang of extortionists that had appeared in Martin's Gap. In response to a message, Jeb came to Porter's home. So you're sure that Slim and Butch are members of the gang, eh, Pete? That's why I'm swearing out a warrant for their arrest, Sheriff. All right, Pete. I'll arrest them and throw them in jail. But you'll have a tough time having a jury that'll vote them guilty. Folks are scared of that gang. Oh, Sheriff, Slim is coming here right now. Huh? Yes, I see him through the window. You can arrest him now. All right, mister. And don't worry about a jury. Remember my plan. I'll do anything you say. Now, that'll be Slim. Come in. Come right in, Slim. We're waiting for you. Now, before you say anything, let me pass this note to Pete Porter. A note? From home. Oh, I didn't see you sitting there by the window. You, uh, remember me? How can I tell when your face is hidden with a mask? You saw me with a mask when we met in Porter's newspaper office. Oh, how's your chin? <laughs> I wouldn't know what you're talking about, mister. Uh, you'd better read your note, Porter. As I said, a friend gave it to me to hand to you. In case you're curious, a friend has already left town. Uh, excuse me. Slim, as long as you're here, you'll save me the trouble of going after you. Porter's ready to identify you as one of the men who wrecked his place. I'm putting you under arrest. No, no, Sheriff. Huh? Pete. I, I've changed my mind. I can't go through with it. That gang's too strong for me to fight. What do you mean, Pete? Well, they, they've captured Jane, my wife. What? This note's from her. I can't risk her life. <laughs> hey, you were saying something about an arrest, Sheriff. Now, if Pete's under the impression that he can identify No, me, no, forget it. Pete, are you sure they got Jane? See for yourself. They must have captured her just after she and Tano left town this morning. Let me see that letter. Someone wrote it for Jane. She signed it. I know her signature. There's no mention of Tano. No. I, I'm sorry, mister. I'm sorry I've got to let you down. But with Jane's life at stake, I... Hey, where are you going? Riding over Tano's trail. I'll see you later. Pete? I wonder what that masked man's got in mind. Riding hard, the masked man headed for the town of Turkey Center, heading over the trail Tonto had traversed that morning in company with Jane Porter. The Indian had traveled slowly and had lingered for some time in the community to be sure that the publisher's wife would be safe with her sister. He was not far on the back trail when his masked friend met him. Oh, sir, hold it, sir. You ride hard, Kimakabe. I wanted to see you as soon as possible, Tonto. Did Mrs. Porter reach her sister? Ah, her there in Turkey Center. How long is it since you've seen her? One hour. One hour? Ah. Then she could hardly have been in the hands of outlaws several hours ago. Several hours ago, her on trail with Tonto. That's strange. Pete Porter was sure she'd sign that letter. He'd certainly know her signature. Letter? Yes, yeah, a letter saying she'd been captured. Who could have forged that signature? I... Oh. You got ID? Perhaps I have, Tonto. There is a man. I wonder. Tonto, come with me. We're going to ride hard. Where we go? Back to Martin's Gap. Mon- come on, come on. The masked man and Toto rode through the moonlit night holding their horses to a steady lope and pausing for only the briefest intervals of rest. They didn't suspect that Slim lay waiting in ambush on the back trail. He had taken shelter behind a thicket at the edge of a shallow stream. I'll get him when they slow down to cross that water. They'll be plenty close. I can't miss. Slim held his rifle in readiness, thumb on the hammer and finger on the trigger. Presently, the horsemen reached the far side of the narrow stream and reined up. Uh, get the masked man first, as soon as he reaches this side. Uh, bad rocks out of this water, Tonto. Let your horse take his way. Huh? Come on, boy. Come on. Easy. Now I'll get him. Slim's thumb drew back the hammer. The click was almost imperceptible, but it was loud enough. Oh, it. The masked man heard it, knew what it meant, and jerked his horse aside. The bullet missed. The Lone Ranger charged at the rifle flash, drawing his gun and firing with lightning speed. Before Slim could fire a second time, the rifle was blasted from his hands by the impact of a heavy bullet. Then the masked man dived from the saddle. Oh, you! Sure you don't. I won't be taken alive. You see about that? Oh. Oh. 
can't hold him. Why, you... you oh, wanted... So it's you, huh, Slim? Now get on your feet. Here, I'll help you. Oh, oh no. Try to ambush us, huh? Well, that confirms a few suspicions. You better let me go. I'm taking you to the sheriff. You should have been arrested yesterday. You will be arrested today. You can't prove I tried to shoot you. It's your word against mine. The charges against you will be specified in the warrant. They'll be sworn out by Pete Porter. Why, you... And he'll not back down again. A warrant was issued without delay when Pete learned that his wife was safe. Slim was thrown into jail, and the news of his arrest created quite a stir in town. But this was greatly overshadowed at noon when word went out from the jail that Slim was dead. Martha and the barber were among those who discussed the startling news. They stood before the ruins of the woman's restaurant. I tell you, Mark, I wouldn't dare open my mouth to complain like Pete Porter did. That gang is too powerful. Here comes banker Timmons. And maybe he'll give more details about the murder. Howdy, Mr. Timmons. Uh, good day, Marty. Good morning, kid. Howdy. Did you learn anything new about Slim's death? No, uh, I talked to the sheriff. He'll give out no information. He's trying to kibble up the killing. I tell you, things have come to a pretty pass when the law can't even protect the prisoner. Hi there. It's Pete Porter. He's up and about again. Hi, Pete. How you feeling? First rate for an invalid. I just had to come out of the house to see the sheriff arrest Butch. What's Butch? That? Yes, I've sworn out a warrant for his arrest. Same as I did for Slim. He's another one of the gang. The sheriff's gone to the cafe across the street oh, to pick him up. Oh, you're taking your life in your hands, Porter. Those crooks will get you for it if it's the last thing they do. Oh, look across the street. The sheriff's captured something. Yeah, found him in a cafe. Let me go. Let me go, you hear? You can't do this. I'll show you it, what I can do. That's the one of the men who wrecked my place. And mine. Then you can both identify uh, No, no, not me. I... I wouldn't take that chance. Uh, come on, there, you troublemaker good. You got anything you say, you can say it when you go on trial. No, I... Hey there, Pete. Is this the man? Yes. He's one of the men who smashed my office. Why, that you... does it. Come on, Butch. You're going to jail. The Lone Ranger and Toto were waiting in a small room adjoining the sheriff's office. The lawman joined them there after putting his prisoner behind the bars. I sure hope I'm not making a mistake in following your plan. We'll back you, Sheriff. Uh, now we're ready for the last act. I'll go get back at Timmons. While you're doing that, Tonto will see that Pete talks to the barber and to Martha Stevens. You better go right now, Tonto. Ah, me go. I'll bring him right to this room, huh? That's the idea. I'll wait here. I'm sorry, Sheriff, but I can't agree to cooperate with you until you give me more details about the death of the man you locked up this morning. You'll get him in a little while, Mr. Timmons. Uh, we'll hold a meeting in this small room. Uh, After you, Mr. Timmons. After you. We meet again, Mr. Timmons. Sit right down there, gents. Uh, this smash man certainly gets around. Seen him before, huh? You met him in Porter's house a little while ago. Well, get to the point, please, Jeb. Well, Timmons, you saw me make an arrest. Yes, I did. I threw Butch behind bars. He's a mighty scared man. Scared? Yeah. After what he heard about Slim, maybe he's got a reason to be scared. He don't want to die at the hands of the leader of the extortion gang. You can understand that, can't you? <clears throat> well, of course I can. That's why Butch talked. It... Talked? He figured Slim was killed by members of the gang so he couldn't tell all he knew. Butch didn't want the same thing to happen to him, so he talked. He figured the best way to save his own neck would be to help the law put the rest of the gang in jail before they got him. That's why you're here, Timmons. What? You're the head of the gang. Uh, that's such a lot. You little... tried your plans out in Shaker City. Sheriff, I'm not used to facing such accusations. I demand the arrest of this smash man. Arrest him for making such slanderous remarks. You'd you better hear the rest of what he's got to say. Uh, we suspected you when you knew so much about the fight in Pete Porter's printing office. You weren't there, Timmons. Uh, Jane didn't tell you about it, and you hadn't seen Pete. The only way you could have known the facts was through your henchmen. That's a lie. When you learned that Mrs. Porter had gone away, you got a copy of her signature from your bank and forged her name to a letter. When Slim learned I was going to check on that letter, he tried to ambush you. You don't know what you're talking about. In addition about... to Slim and Butch, there are others in your gang. They were paid by Slim. Knew nothing about your part in the game. No, oh, no, no, you're all wrong. Butch lied to save his own skin. He and Slim were the ringleaders. Butch must be the one who murdered Slim. He's killed others as well. He has, huh? 
Can you prove that? Yes, yes, yes. I have proof he's a killer. It's in my office. I wonder what Butch has to say about that. Huh? Bring him in, Pete. Right. Get in there, Butch. You hear what we said? Simmons. Oh, oh, my poor cat. Uh, you can't put the blame on me. You swore you'd never tell about that evidence. You told all you knew? I didn't say a word. Porter kept me throttled in that next room so I couldn't warn you. I heard you trying to put the blame on me, and so did Slim. Uh, Slim. He's right in the next room. Come on, Slim. What do you got to say? Uh, you. Yes, me, you fat fool. They tricked you into talking. They made you and Butch think I was dead, and you figured uh, Butch would talk, so you talk. By thunder, the way you're all throwing the blame around, I guess we got a case against all three of you. All the case you need, Sheriff. On my way out, I'll ask the witnesses to step in. Come on, then, all of you. You heard the admissions of guilt? We sure did. We heard it all. Oh, Chief Marty, you all, all of you. I'll testify against those crows. Those two were in my place and uh, they threatened no. me. That's the cur that collected cash for me. Sir, Sheriff, let me speak. Chief Marty, I'll, I'll make good. I admit it I did wrong. I'll make good the damage I had done. You, you, you've got to give me a chance to make good. Save all that, Timmy. Uh, You'll be told by the law how you'll have to make good. Uh, and so are your two pals and the crooks who work with him. I'll turn state's evidence. I'll name the others. Sue alive. <laughs> Fall it all over yourselves to win favor with the law. <laughs> I sure wish that masked man had stayed here long enough to see how well his plan worked out. That, that masked man? Who in thunder was he? Pete Porter will tell you. Mean to say you haven't guessed? He's the Lone Ranger. I'll do it. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh-huh.